And then, of course, we also had the CM Punk interview on Ariel Helwani's show today. And it was an hour and 50 minutes. Wow. Okay, so I only, I, I being that I had to uh, write a daily update and watch Raw, I I didn't know it was that long. Oh, yes, so, it was. So I, I saw, you know, I would say a good hour plus, but I did not go to the two-hour mark. I did see the, well, they showed the replays anyway. I mean, I knew about the Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch angle, which is, you know, I mean, it's... That was in addition to the hour and 50 minutes. Yeah, I mean, for the, you know, for MMA, I, it's really interesting that for an MMA show, he must have done, what, uh, two and a half hours? Yeah. Um, on pro, pro wrestling. But I'm sure between that interview and the fact that it was mentioned on Raw and the punk thing, obviously, you know, I mean, it's it probably got tons, tons more listeners and viewers than his regular MMA stuff. So from that standpoint, um, you know, I mean, you know, again, it's like he's done wrestling before, you know, and, and fairly often or not, you know, but fair, fair, ever, you know, he's a big wrestling fan and all. But, um, you know, the normal show is obviously an, an MMA show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this punk said a lot of stuff. But um, I guess a few things that I'll say, and then we can go over it. Number one is that, um, no, no. As far as I know, nobody from AEW has commented right, publicly, right? I have heard nothing. You've heard nothing from anyone? Well, I've heard nothing publicly. Yeah, I've I mean, heard, I've heard, heard from people plenty privately. Okay, you, yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I actually haven't heard a lot privately. I have heard some privately, but um, certainly, I mean, Tony Khan hasn't said anything at all about anything today um you know that or the the aw cuts which is actually a bigger story in some ways I mean, it, it is but the punk thing's bigger for today and then um um but there's others who um yeah i mean various things i think if i'm gonna say you know the the people that i've heard from were had kind of similar viewpoints to me in the sense that you know some of the stuff he said um there, you know, especially a lot on Tony Khan as far as how he handles things. You know, we pretty much all, I think, agree, you know, where he said like it should have been settled and things like that. And the idea of keeping people apart and all that, you know, was, was not a good idea. Um, but I think that the other aspect of it was from people in the company was that, um, you know, he's talking like all this and you know, nobody did more damage to the company than he did. And, um, you know, trying to say that, you know, other people did damage or Tony did damage is like, you know, I mean, I think that there's probably, and there, there'd be a few exceptions, but I think that as far as in the company itself, um, the general feeling is, like I said, there, there's certainly exceptions that the best thing would have been for it, this relationship never to happen. And maybe Punk would even say the same thing because I'm sure, you know, he made he made good, you know, great money but um, I don't think that it left a great feeling in, in his mouth either. Well, he uh, started talking about WWE, and he mentioned that uh, he injured his triceps in the Royal Rumble match and talked about how he's feels he is ahead of schedule on his recovery, but they're trying to slow him down and... He, he even said that he was he was he would almost have gone to mania and tried to do a match except the doctors wouldn't let him. Yes, which yes. would be uh, that would be rushing it a lot, especially so were, when he had that brace on and his arm was pretty stiff and everything. So they were protecting him from himself, and he said that it was night and day. The uh, recovery from this triceps injury is compared to the one in AEW because he noted after the brawl out incident. Uh, nobody talked to him for six months, and he said as a result, he had to do everything involving his tricep. He said he had to find a doctor, he had to find a rehab place, he had to do all of that himself. And uh, obviously in WWE, when people are talking to him, uh, that was all taken care of. But uh, he says he he should be back hopefully sooner than he was for his last triceps. He, he even I, I did not hear this, this but I guess he made a hint um, and this would be um, about a uh, God it would be a um, four and a half month recovery but there was something about a summer pay-per-view in Europe 
And, you know, tonight they just announced, like just minutes ago, June 15th, Glasgow, uh, for Clash of the Castle 2. So that seems uh, that seems very um, quick. You know, for that injury, I mean, it's usually six to eight or nine months, I think. Uh, something in, in, in that regard, most of the time when people tear triceps before they're back in the ring. Well, hopefully and, this and, will... And Hopefully this will put a stop to uh, the claims that they changed the finish of the Royal Rumble. Well, he, he said, said that, that, but we already knew that. He did not call an audible for the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, he was not supposed to win. He was supposed to wrestle Seth Rollins. Did say he was going to wrestle Seth Rollins. He yeah. said that, uh, and actually this was, I found this to be quite interesting. He uh, literally felt exactly like we did when he was watching WWE about a month before Survivor Series. And they had all of those CM Punk hints. They had they had people doing the GTS. They had lines from some of his earlier promos. And he said people were calling him and saying, you're going to come back. And he was like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know why they're doing this. And he said that they, uh, they talked the Monday before the Survivor Series. and So uh, five days. It was right? Five days before he talked to Nick Khan. And then he was going to talk to Paul and uh, Paul Levesque. And Paul. That was, that, that was Thanksgiving, which well, was two days before. Yep. Paul said, I want to FaceTime you. And so they FaceTimed and they, uh, they did the deal and they uh, made the agreement for Survivor Series. And he said that, uh, you know, they, they basically figured he must have some no compete or something. So they were thinking about maybe having him come back for the Rumble. I, you and know what he said I, I, he had I, I, no I, okay i the thing is is that okay i knew that there was no non compete it was not a secret that there was no non compete and nikon knows all so that one it's like I can't, i'm not going to say anyone's dishonest well but, you are saying someone's dishonest because no, he I, flat out said no, that I'm saying, when I'm, he I'm, talked I'm, to nikon I'm, I'm, I'm surprised only because it was not a secret uh, that he was fired. You know, what I mean, it wasn't like he was. I mean, he was he was outright fired. So there's no non compete unless they keep paying you, and they were not still paying him. I mean, I knew that. Um, I mean, I knew he could go to WWE, you know, immediately. Um, but you know, I, I mean, the idea, it just would surprise me Nikon didn't know, but again, it's not, you know, I always think Nikon knows all, but the truth is, is that, you know, maybe he didn't. You well, know, maybe, Punk said I, I'm, that... I'm not uh, disputing it, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just surprised. Punk said that when he talked to Nick Khan, and they, they uh, talked about how there was not a no-compete, he said that, uh, Nick said, are you telling me that, like, we could have signed you the next day? And Punk said, yes, and Nick Khan said, well, I wish I would have known that then! So apparently he wanted to bring him in the day after CM Punk. Well, got I'm fired. sure. Of, co of course, that's what I kept. You know, I kept basically writing that that he could be in at any time. You know, and I even wrote that there was and there was stuff because I know there was stuff and it went cold. I mean, I'm not. I don't know if it was between lawyers. I don't know what, but it was certainly there was stuff, and then it was denied, and then Paul Levesque was going to go at that pay per view and say we've never talked to him. Um, we have no interest or whatever, and um, no one asked the question, which he was shocked about. And then um, I was told that the interest by WWE was about 10 days earlier. So they probably started thinking about it like five days before maybe we should do this. But it was for Survivor Series. I mean, you know, for, um, yeah, for Survivor Series in Chicago. Uh, when this, th that's the backstory that I was told afterwards when I was like, you know, how far back did this go? And I was told roughly 10 days uh, as far as first decisions of should we call him or should we make this deal? So there you go. So he said that, um, what else did he say? Oh, he said that he was on a plane and uh, a bunch of the wrestlers were there, and he that was, lost that was a trip his... from from CFFC, which he's still announcing for, which I didn't know. I didn't know that he was still announcing. He lost his earbuds, and Liv Morgan helped him find them, and then Liv talked to Bailey, and Bailey talked to Punk, and she said, "You know, we got this show coming up. You know, why don't you stop by?" And this was, of course, when he was, uh, you know, there were already issues in AEW. And so, but he, but he was he was right about to start. 
in AEW back. Yep, but when uh, this happened, you remember remember this was a pretty big story at the time. Yes, he showed up and he said that people in AEW felt that he had betrayed them. He said and, that, that word was used in, in in to him, right? Yep, and he just kind of blew it off and he said that uh, you know I showed up and I said hi to a couple of people and then they kicked me out and so I left. Yeah. And he said he fully expected to be kicked out and he was. They asked him about the Vince allegations. He said they were horrible. He ripped on, he ripped on Vince. He, he was not sugarcoating that one. He said that uh, I saw him once. I was at the gym, and uh, Vince showed up, and he said that uh, he hugged me, and he said, uh, we need to connect again at some point, and then he never talked to the guy again. They never connected. He, and, told, a funny, uh, he, to, he told a funny story about, um, I guess he was on the phone, maybe while he was doing some cardio, um, and... Someone went up to him. This is not Vince, and just goes, "Can say so when people are on the phone at the gym." Yeah, so he had to get off the phone, and he goes, "I was on the phone with Nick Khan." <laughs> that actually made the story even funnier. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He compared it to coming to terms with the Benoit double murder suicide because he was friends with Benoit, and then he had to, and he mentioned like you know had, having seen Daniel, you know Chris's um, Chris's son, you know. I guess not even all that long before and said, you know, he traveled with Benoit and he liked him and then had to come to terms with the idea, which, look, we all had to come to terms with that one. That one was a freaking nightmare of all nightmares. So he talked about the uh, Wembley situation and how he uh, didn't have transportation from the airport and he got on the tube. He got on the tube and said it was an adventure. And then, you know, the funny thing about this whole thing is, is uh, then he mentions that, like, when he flies home to Chicago, he says, I take the blue line home. It's well, like, I thought, like, this I, is a normal I, thing for him to do, but it was, he did say, you know, it was, it was fine. It was just, he felt I, it was I, irresponsible I, I, that there was nobody to uh, pick him up from the airport. I have heard stories that that's true, you know, that, that, you know, he's the people who have seen him on the subway from uh, the airport home. Yeah. So he pretty much said that uh, there is an NDA involving Brawl Out. He cannot talk yes, about which, that. Which which we know about, of course. There is not an NDA revolving what happened or involving what happened with the with Jungle Boy. Yeah. But he doesn't want to talk about it. But then he did talk. Then about he did. It. Then he talked about it for for a long time. Yeah. He he talked about the uh, the idea. You know, it's which I I just say this. One of the things that that he said. Um, when he's talking about the original incident, you know, he's, and, and his contention was that all of these people begged him to get involved, um, and especially Tony Schiavone. He really put it on Tony Schiavone, begging him to stop Jungle Boy from doing this and said, you know, about, um, you know, it, we're, we're going to ruin our reputation with rental car companies if we bring back a car with the, the windshield shattered, which is weird only because... Um, you know, how many times has, has pro wrestling destroyed cars? Well, they've destroyed cars many times, but, uh, you know, oftentimes they're... Often, know, but not always. Yes, but, but you know, they, they have used rental cars before. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. But I think the, the, biggest, the biggest issue with this whole thing involving Jungle Boy is... There's a lot. So, Punk explains that I didn't know that he had a vacation planned. And if you recall, the original he, he, story was that, uh, you know, Punk thought, well, this guy wants to do something and he doesn't want to go to work and uh, this is a way to, to take some time he, off or whatever. He, he even sort of said that here, saying that, yes, like, oh, he, wanted, that. He, he wanted to get away from going to Canada because it was so hard to travel. Yes. And, and I do remember, you know, everyone had trouble during those some of those Canadian shows because of, you know, the flights up there were taken like all day in some cases. Well, here, here's the point. So this was what he said originally, which was that was the reason that Jack wanted to do this. And I remember at the time when I first heard the story, I thought, it was I thought like he... I asked people about this and they were like, do you realize Jungle Boy has had more matches in this company than anybody? Like well, well, of we... all the people to claim is trying to do something to not go to work, you, you picked literally the worst person because he works all the time. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, it, it was a planned. It was a planned vacation. Well, I mean, yes, yeah. he was going to go on vacation. He wanted to do this deal, and and he was told to get a car. So at yes. the end of the day, like whether it's Tony Schiavone or the Doctor or CM Punk or Jungle well, Boy, I, I personally I think that they should listen to the Doctor. Well, the point is, and and, and if that's and if that's the case, the Doctor should. have But said, hold on, you're missing no. the point here. The point is, 
Yes. Who told him to rent a car? Tony? I do. I, it presumably, would, it would be Tony Khan. No, presumably, it would be somebody like, um, you know, one of the, the agents. I don't think that that's, I mean, it could be Tony Khan, but it would be somebody h- higher up, obviously. Well, the fact of the matter but is, the fact is somebody whoever told him. told him to rent the car, yeah. that's the person that everybody should have been talking to. Absolutely. Because whatever you want to say, and listen, I'm not a big fan of glass either. You know, no. I don't think people should be taking bumps in glass. But the fact of the matter is, Jungle Boy was told a certain thing. Everybody was telling him not to do it. Where's Tony? Well, Tony's... N- oh, that, that's that's another issue that was brought up. He has up. no phone? He- like, uh, seriously, in a situation like this, at the end of the day... Oh, of course it's Tony. Why is nobody just going straight to the top and calling Tony and saying, are we doing this or not? That's my es- question about all and of especially, especially because Tony is at every show. It's not like Tony is, you know, there's th- like a week. Sometimes maybe Tony's away for soccer and he's not at the show. He is at every show. He, he is the only person, as far as I know, there may I don't think there's an exception, who has been at every single AEW show. So uh, they did the whole thing and then, uh, you know, he said that uh, Punk said that I told him, you know, we're not doing that on on my show. If you want to do it, you can do it Wednesday. And uh, he said that Jungle Boy said okay, and that of course led to everything that happened in Wembley. Okay, so I, I want to I say one thing: when this happened, um, when this thing happened, and I first heard about it, and I did not report it because I was basically told, and I know you were too, it's all settled. It's not a big deal, and and never heard about it again until. Punk, months later, brought it up. The uh, Wembley. No, which the, one are you um, talking about? The the, uh, the 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 whole story with um, the glass. When did he bring it up later? Well, wasn't that the whole thing where um, he talked about? Was it? How did the glass story get out? I don't even remember how the glass story got out. I mean, that's what I I, thought, I don't remember. I, I thought everything was settled, and he talked about it. I, I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong about that, but that's how I recall. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I just know that I knew the story, and then Wembley happened. And I, knew the, made... I knew the story, and then we were at Wembley, and then he said, cry me a river, and I remember seeing that going like, ah, oh, God. It's like, you know, I, I don't like that stuff. I don't like that stuff. And like I said, I would not defend him for saying that, but the reaction was an overreaction. So then uh, it happened, and then he says he went to Tony, and he said, please handle that, please. And Tony said, what do you want me to do? And I said, I'm not telling you what to do. Just be the boss, please. And so uh, Tony didn't do anything, and so he went up to uh, Jack Perry, and you know, Jack said, uh, are you going to do something about it? And these are the exact words. I can't even say this with a straight face because it's so ridiculous. He actually said this. He goes, I thought I was doing a responsible thing. I didn't punch anybody. I just choked somebody a little bit. Oh, he choked him until Samoa Joe told him to stop is what he said, right? I didn't punch anybody. I just choked somebody a little bit. This was, in CM Punk's mind, the responsible thing to do. So, yes, Joe said stop. And so he said he turned to Tony and he said, this place is a fucking joke, man. You're a clown. I quit. And so he went to his room. Joe and Jerry Lynn came up to him and they talked him into doing the match. And he said, you know, I knew it was going to be my last match ever with Samoa Joe. So I went out there and I did it. And uh, and then I went backstage and he said that they told him that, uh, that Jack had left. And so he said he was going to watch the show. And then a little while later, a security guy came up to him, and uh, the security guy goes, what are your plans for the rest of the day? And so Punk said, am I going to make your life easier by just leaving right now? And uh, and so he left. He bought chicken for the guys, and he left. And that is basically the story that we heard uh, from from what happened that day. But uh, he was he was responsible. No. Because he I mean, didn't the, punch him, he merely choked him. Yeah, um, he I, ridiculed the idea that Tony's life was in danger. He made that. Clear. Well, I don't. I don't. I you know, look. 
I got I got so many reports from backstage and they're from people who and and two of them were from people who weren't even wrestlers who were completely neutral on the whole thing and you know if you want to look back at the issue you can look back at the issue I got I got quotes in there and everything but um you know as far as um you know what happened obviously there's very different versions of what happened but in the end you know they had uh, their lawyers their counsel they had uh their disciplinary committee, which is a couple of lawyers and Brian Danielson, and they had an outside counsel, and they all, you know, I, I don't know if they saw the footage. I was told there was surveillance, but they all certainly were part of an investigation, and they all said that Punk needed to be fired. So that's, and that's, you know, I mean, Tony had made, it was Tony's decision to fire him um, because some people had tried to do the story that Brian, it was Brian Danielson, and Brian Danielson it was his recommendation. But the point is, Brian Danielson considers himself friendly with the guy, and basically said he had to make the tough decision, and he knew it was the bad decision for business. But he said sometimes you have to make decisions that are going to be bad for business because they're right, they're right, the right decision. So you know, um, that was that was the explanation at the time. And he talked about the uh, all-in situation, although he couldn't. Uh or the all-out situation, which he couldn't uh, talk a lot about. But uh, he did mention the scrum, said he saw a bunch of goofs that were spreading stories about him. That's me and you. Yeah. and Although uh, he, the guy he actually went to is now his buddy. You know what's funny about that whole thing? Yes. Is uh, the very first thing that happened is he uh, went after somebody for being friends with Colt Cabana and uh, was told that, in fact... I'm not friends with Cole Cabana. You have the wrong information. Yeah. And then uh, and then he went after me for something that he was very angry about. And I don't even know what that is. I can't even remember, but I do know one thing. Well, I and mean, that is the, that is about been. about five seconds into it, I was like, this guy either didn't listen, or he got like a clip and he heard it out of context or something because he's mad about something that I never said, and the idea that you and I reported this whole Col Colt Cabana thing and that we were the genesis of all of this, that is absolutely 100% not true. And that story was all over the internet it, long before we ever talked about it. And it when was, we did finally talk about it, yes. we were trying to explain what was going on in the Hangman, all of these riddles in the Hangman promo, and we made it very clear that there were people who believed that story. We well, never people. said that was the story. We never say, said that's what I, happened. I, I, I did say that was the story, but much later. Much but, later you may have, but at the time... Oh, no, not at the time. At the but, time, we said but, that's what people believe happened. And and over and over, and I mean, I, I will say that uh, on that one, that long before um, the Adam Page interview, okay, I mean, I... I mean, look, I'd heard it from the internet. I'd heard it from wrestlers. I'd heard a ton of stuff. You know, all the same thing, the, the Colt Cabana thing, right? And I I said, I mean, I texted Tony Khan, and I go, like, you've got to address this in some form for backstage. Not for me. I don't give a shit. Well, I mean, whatever. you got to address this because it's really, it's really fucking up the dressing room. And this is long before anything happened. This is long before that promo thing. And... You know, obviously that that never happened, and even you know he he talked about it, and I mean I've heard even today from people in the company going like, he just should have done it then. He should have done it in in February 2022 or whenever that thing originally went down. You know, months before it became a, a big dressing. Room. I mean, it was already becoming a dressing room issue, so that's when it should have been addressed, and it wasn't. And you know that. Um, but, you know, I mean, you know, keep just keep going. I mean, I, I'm sure I'll have more to say. Well, he said he was he was a professional because he didn't kill the hangman. That's that's he was professional because he did not double leg him and murder him, he said. And, uh, you know, it was, it was another thing that was interesting. Is he was talking about the promo. OK. And before uh, the, the only thing I had heard was it was the one line, right, that um, the line about workers rights. He said that they got together and they went through a promo back and forth. And this is what I'm going to say. And this is what you're going to say. You know, not word for word scripted, but basic outlines. And then he said that the entire promo, um, 
Page didn't do any of it, so he was left. I can't do the lines I planned because he wasn't feeding me the lines and this and that. I mean, this is the first I heard um, that it was the entire promo and not just the one line that got him mad. So I, I just never heard that story before. And then he uh, said, I will never, uh, he said at one point, Colt Cabana came up to him and said, uh, hey, can we can we talk so things aren't weird? And Punk said, uh, I told him, I will never talk to you without a lawyer present. And apparently that was the last time they spoke. And he spent a lot of time, he did say at the end that, um, you know, the positives of his AEW run outweighed the negatives in his mind to him. Really? Really? That's what we said. I think the positives definitely outweigh the negatives, he said. Mm -hmm. But he spent a lot of time um, essentially saying that Tony Khan is a nice guy, but, uh, you know, we're not promoting wrestling. They're not trying to sell tickets. They're not trying to make money. They're, they're uh, you know, and... and and uh, well, Ariel well, asked him, well, what are they trying to do? Okay, well, and his response thing. was, have good matches. Which is not a crime. I mean, and he, he even said that. He, he goes, even said, and that's he said, fine. He said, that's fine. Okay, the, the, the thing, okay, again, like, there's always a different perspective. Um, but I know that Tony Khan is actually a guy who lives based on ratings and selling tickets. And I mean, how many times have we heard about, you know, good ticket sales and gates and things like that when they're good? We hear it all the time. Now, I'm certain that um, he cares about that greatly. And when it's ba bad, you know, he's aware of it now, how he addresses it and things like that. But I mean, as far as the goal, I mean, that's the goal. It's everyone's goal. Everyone's goal is to you know, make money and to uh, have a, you know, have a successful thing. And for a lot of the period, I mean, this has been a five-year company. For much of this period, attendance has been very good. It hasn't been that great, um, you know, of late. Um, ratings have been quite good, you know, of lot, you know, e even now they're not that, they're not, they're, 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 they're at a low point, you know, and obviously we can talk about it, but they're not, they're certainly most of the, most of the, those, the, that f four, four-year plus period, on television, the ratings have been good. You know, the pay per views have been good. It's not. It's not like it's some disaster that people are. But you know, there's a narrative that people. And it's funny because what he was saying. Well, and 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 you know, like some of the stuff about Tony being a leader and Tony should have stepped in and things like that is the same stuff that you know we've heard. I've said. We all said. Like, you know, I I'm listening to a lot of it and I'm going like, you know, he's he's right. Um, not everything, obviously, but I mean, it, it was just like, that is an issue. And I mean, even like the night before the frickin' brawl out, Garrett and I talked to Tony and we brought this up and his thing was, is he, he thought it was cool. You know, I don't know if it was like a Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels thing, but that, that was what he said. He goes, I, I, you know, you, you like a little tension. You like that thing where fans don't know if it's real or not or whatever, you know, but I mean, he was, you know, he, he. He, he answered that and you know and, and I brought it up specifically for you know I mean I wasn't clairvoyant and knowing that there's going to be some fight the next day but I sure as hell knew that there were problems because punk did that interview with sports Illustrated where he blamed me by the way um not, not even me he blamed the young bucks for telling me which and again I should have immediately um whatever immediately when he said that I should have just contacted him and just gone dude it's not the young bucks and I mean he still goes with that narrative even though I did tell him that but I you know, didn't tell him it right away because I just thought, nah, let him blow off steam. I, I can take the heat. I don't really care. But, you know, and, and I mean, the whole thing of um, uh, the goof with the five stars and everything, that was a cool shot. But, you know, I mean, you know, he contacted me plenty of times and I wasn't such a goof talking TV ratings when he came in and just goes, you got to explain TV ratings to me because I, I'm not, you know, it's not something that I've learned. So you got to explain it. And, you know, I tried and all that and whatever, but whatever that none of that really matters today. But, um, you know, I just felt that, um, you know, that, uh, I, I don't know. Cause I, I had, I, I thought like, Oh God, you, maybe if I told him a week earlier, he wouldn't have done that big monologue, but it was probably going to happen either way. I think, 
I mean, and, and he was already mad and all that. So that's water under the bridge. Well, that's the gist of it. As I noted, it's an hour and 50 minutes, so it's impossible to go over everything here, but you can listen to it. It's on YouTube. Uh, Air Lithuani MMA Hour, so you can go up there and check it out. But thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.